Hi everybody, here we are. We're in the second part of the compost tea video. Um, I want to add a little bit more information that I kind of, I guess, uh, forgot to add. So the first thing is, is uh, the compost tea uh, durations of aeration that I gave you guys on the part one video, um, those aeration times are for outdoor setups that are using raised beds or directly into the ground. They're not for indoor setups or house plants using pots. Um, they're also for springtime. So, um, so the I, I mentioned in the last video, dilution was going to be what I'm, I cover in this video. That's true, but dilution is integral to aeration times. And so I'm going to kind of explain a bit more of that here. Um, so. When I said basically a half an hour is kind of the minimum and I like to shoot for uh, durations over time, that's actually really important. Uh, most people don't realize that when you're doing this method, huh, it's probably going to be, excuse me, uh, very few people even know about this method, but when you're using this method, the two things you're constantly fighting is anaerobic takeover of the soil. So 30 minutes is good. Um, especially in the springtime if you're building soil or even in the wintertime. Pre-feeding your soil as long as you're not drenching the soil and adding a bunch of moisture. For instance, if you don't get a lot of rain, it's really good to feed your soil. And when you feed your soil, you can have a much higher anaerobic mix than you would normally have and that is a fine. The um, problem you run into is when you're getting your anaerobic mix closer to fruiting, you will start to expect the shelf life of your um, product. And so to maximize shelf life, you want to create a high a uh, aerobic mix in whatever you're dealing with. So when you're um, dealing with, oh, sorry, the lighting is just terrible. I'll go back this way. So when you're dealing with the aerobic mix um, closer to flouting, flowering or fruiting, you're gonna want an aerobic mix that goes for hours and um there's a couple ways to accomplish that if you don't have the pump system right here hello pump hello if you don't have that what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to hand mix it and so hand mixing it in a 70 gallon trough is going to be difficult so you run into this conundrum, um, how are you going to get the aeration? Aerating it more often helps, but as you're getting into fruiting, what's really best is if you're um, able to actually completely uh, dispose of all the tea in every single brew. So what you do is you brew for three days and then you, like, you uh, use all the tea and then you brew for three days use all the tea. If you don't let it go over three days and you aerate at least say a minute or two a day, you'll be fine. Um, however, for the most part in any compost tea uh, brewing setup, sorry the bugs are insane out here, any compost tea brewing setup, you're going to have issues with anaerobic takeover, especially if you're starting to get a lot of rain or if you live in a rainy climate. So, um, and, and when you're applying the mix, when you know you have anaerobic problems or you're bumping into a harvest or you are got some issues with rain, what you need to do is up your dilution. So meaning you put less compost tea when you dilute it and a lot more water. So I'm going to show you basically first off how to brew uh, the anaerobic and the aerobic in a five gallon setup. So what I have right here is, set you guys up. See a five gallon bucket? So I got my alfalfa pellets right here, and I got my compost manure blend. Uh, both these things you can get anywhere in America. This is at every Home Depot and Lowe's. You can get it lots of other places. It's basically peat moss, which isn't great. Uh, I, I don't use this um, for sustainability reasons because of the peat, but you, you more than welcome to use it um, on a low scale because you use so little of it and get so much out of it, I don't think it's a huge issue. 
Um, so, but if you can get one year old aged manure without any peat moss, that's actually superior. And how you age it is actually a real, real issue. You don't want to age it dry. Don't let it dry out when you're aging it. Make sure you create like a 60, 70 uh, uh, relative humidity, percent humidity in what, wherever you're, you're um, what, allowing it to age. So what I'm going to first do is I got my bucket. It's not even rinsed out. No big deal. Alfalfa pellets. Now, this is pelletized alfalfa. That's what it looks like. It, uh, this is really good stuff because they pelletize it fresh, so it maintains a high level of uh, minerals. And one of the issues that you're going to have with it is that it expands. So when you use, do this method, I'm going to show you, you're, you don't fill it all the way with water for that expansion to, to take place, otherwise it will overflow on you. you. Take your manure. About equal parts. So that's all you got in there so far. I mix it up a little bit. This kind of aids in the brewing of it. You have something like that. Now you add the water. Let me let me do that for you guys. As you can tell, there's a gap to allow it to rise. Now, the first day you brew this, you don't need to aerate it. All the sloshing water, that aerates for you. Hello. So all the sloshing of the water, that aerates great. You can kind of get a look at it. See all the bubbles and stuff. That's a good aeration. Now, so this is the springtime. You don't have to observe the three-day window. What you can do is let it go for much longer. If you're able to do like an hour aeration a day, spread throughout the day, great. If you can do a couple minutes, that's fine too. At least 30 seconds. That's bare minimum if you're using the three-day method. Now, you could probably go, if you're doing like five minutes a day, I would say you could go probably a week or two. Uh, the less true, the closer you get to flowering. And you're going to want to go with higher dilutions the closer you get to flowering. So we're going to cover that here in a second, but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you what I mean by agitating it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a device, and I'll be right back. Hello, I'm back. So what do I mean by this? Stick. This is an old broken off uh, shovel handle, I think. So here we go. I'm going to show you how to agitate it. So, after the first day, this is what I mean by agitating it. You want to basically stir it back and forth, all around. Pull it out a little bit, get in deep. Really mix it up good. You don't have to time yourself, but you'll start killing your plants if you mess this up. So... When in doubt, give it a little extra stir. I'm going to spare you guys doing it the whole time, but that's what I need. So, the next step is, what do I mean by dilution? Alright, so, I'm going to go ahead and step another 50, or excuse me, 50, 5 gallon bucket, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Another 5 gallon bucket. 
should be sponsored with that one. I guess with both of them, huh? Alright, so, here we go. Um, so, dilution basically means this. After you got this going for at least three days, uh, you're going to want to give a, about two inches minimum. Um, maximum, about 30% of the bucket. Um, now, if you're really close to harvest, you can go less than two inches and go a cup or two. That's all right. But two inches, I generally, you get such a boost from feeding. It's more labor than it's worth when you're that close to harvest. But people, a couple of people that I've shown this method to have gotten great results by doing low dilutions. So that's definitely a route you can do. And low dilutions into feeding definitely helps you from falling off a cliff with the anaerobic if you get a little too overzealous. Grabbing the hose, we're diluting it. So basically that consists of filling the bucket up with water to a, a level you feel comfortable with carrying. Uh, I like to do this near the plants so it's not a long carry. Uh, that's generally about how far I feel right there. Once again, pretty close to the top and not all the way there. You guys can see it in frame. And that right there is what you feed with. Now, um, as far as the next step, I'm going to cut to showing you guys the barrel system and exactly how my higher scale solution works. It essentially is going to do the same thing. The only difference is instead of uh, manually pouring it from bucket to bucket, what we're going to use is a pump. Um, the dilution, everything I said earlier is all on point w with this either system. If you're going into a harvest, you want to back down, you want to up your aeration as much as possible, and you want to lower your overall feeding. Um, and when you're in your early stages, you kind of seesaw the other direction. And it's really important you stay to the minimums because you can develop anaerobic bacterial buildup and that is bad for pretty much everything living. The other thing I need to talk to you guys about is some of you live in actual swampland. That has a high anaerobic bacterial buildup, so these methods have to be adjusted. Everything I've said for people like that, you want to adjust your aerobic, air, your aeration up as much as possible, except for in the very beginning, and you can get, still get a lot out of a, you know, one hour over the day um, aeration, minimum like 10 minutes in the bucket method. Always observe the three-day rule, pitch your tea after three days unless you're using pumps, and then get it up to, you know, six hours would probably be best, uh, and the 12 hours towards the, the harvest periods. And you want to definitely, when you're doing row creation, do a ton of uh, hydrating soil. Now, I haven't, uh, I covered row creation and uh, planting in another video. I, I'm going to do... My next video is going to be on mulching, and that video is going to cover basically mulching techniques that you have to do right away to get the best results. The video after that is going to be actually putting in new garden beds. And so I'm going to um, try to get those next two videos up as soon as possible. Now, the next thing you're going to see, <laughs> no, I just promised it, is the dilution with the cylinder in my pump. All right, see you. gear. Alright, so everybody, here's my setup. So here's the dilution cylinder. I explained in the last video this uh, area somewhat. There's the, the hose right there. It goes down in to a cutout. You guys can't, probably can't see it in, the, in there super great. Down there is, ooh, Pardon me. Down there is a pump. That pump basically goes to this hose, PVC, hose bib, oh my bad, hose bib, 
and then that hose right here it's a normal garden hose um, so basically what I do with that is I take that hose around and feed all my plants uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn on the, the sump pump from the trough area over here pardon the lighting it's a little terrible Um, I don't know if you guys remember, or if you just checked out the last video, but here's the trough area. Um, that pump right there is the one with the hose that you're just looking at. I'm going to turn it on here. Let me set you guys up so you can see part of the action. And then I'll take you around to the other side and so you can see the rest of it. Bill here, my hose just popped out, which happened because the clip broke that was holding it. So I got a little emergency on my hands. Damn. So that's what we're dealing with. As you can see, it's turned out pretty quick. And that's how I transfer my tea from one spot to another. Now it looks like we hit a clog, so what I'm going to do is run over to the other side, oh, look out, and stop it. As you can tell, that got drained really quick. <laughs> wow, <laughs> haven't done that in a while, so... Here we go. The problem here is that we ran r dry really quick, but you can kind of see the setup a little better. And that's the pump we're just working over, the one that was filling up the blue cylinder. You can see the kind of the sediment separation between the cinder blocks in there. And that brings me to another point. Farming's dirty work. <laughs> that's not what I was going to say. My next point is that if you clean your your aeration um, trough often or your secondary bucket, you don't have to aerate quite as much. As long, if there's more sediment in there, that definitely helps bring the anaerobic balance up more quickly. Um, so you you're gonna want up you're gonna want to make sure your sediment doesn't stick around for a very long time when you're using the bucket method. Like, I'd say probably a month tops if you're a really good aerator. Maybe, excuse me, maybe longer. And as far as the pump system, I clean mine out every couple months, pull out all the sediment. So that's probably the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to show that in the next video. I'm not sure. I don't have time today to do it. But uh, I'll probably do it tomorrow. So I may tack it on this video. Or I may just tack it on the next video as part of a... A update to the compost cheese. Alright, so that's basically the setup in a nutshell. I'll see you guys later. I took a perfect avenue down the road to both of you. Then I go Dutch. This is too much. With all the money in the world, you could never buy this.